All right, we're gonna go to the antique store. See what's going on up here today. You wanna go in with me? Let's go. We're at the Sam Houston Antique Mall. This is where I have my um, storefronts. I have four of them. And uh, just be talking about the history of the building. Hopefully I can get the owner and, and talk to her a little bit about, you know, the building history, amazing stories. Some, you know, kind of scary, but, you know, we deal with it. It's a really old building, and I hope you love it. So we're talking here with Melinda, and I've shown you her booth before. She collects beautiful pieces of glass. It just always has me in awe. I'm going to let her explain some of these pieces. So what's your favorite piece, Melinda? From this group here... It would have to be the Fostoria oh, heirloom. Can you guys see how the light is? That just is picking up the light. Is this? Does this have the uranium? No, this is yeah. opalescent. Oh well, that explains. It's all beautiful. four are part of the Fostoria heirloom collection. Look at this piece. <laughs> it's so beautiful. It has cute little turned-up swirl feet. Now this is opalescent also, but it was made back in the early 1900s. That is absolutely gorgeous. And what would this be used for? What type of dish is it? It's just a whatever you want it. It's beautiful. It uh, could be a candy dish, could be nuts, it could be just a whimsy. That's really pretty. Now your Fostoria heirloom was made in the late 40s, early 50s. Look at that one. Turn this up. Look at the bottom. So I'll hold it up to the light for you guys. That's just so pretty. What would you say would have to be your second? I mean, they got the tall bowl here. Mm, that's beautiful. Second favorite would have to be the Fenton. Oh gosh, I've looked at your Fenton before. The cranberry hobnail. That would have to be oh. my favorite. You know, I've been looking on eBay. I've noticed that this this cranberry hobnail, specifically cranberry hobnail, has been selling very, very well. And that's just been this week that I've noticed that. I had a piece of a, a, a vase, an Empoli vase, mm -hmm. and a hobnail started coming up because of it. For whatever reason, they crossed. Um, those are beautiful, and you got an assortment here. You, ooh, I, I really like that blended one, right? That is mm -hmm. really pretty. Oh, and she's got the small one. The blending is really, really Your close. Your newer pieces, there's more of a distinction between the cranberry and the opalescent. That was good to know. So, Melinda here, she really does know what she's talking about when it comes to glass, I've been told. What is your background? You've just been in this for a while, right? My mother opened her first antique shop okay. in 1973. Oh, my goodness. Was it, what town was it in? Huntsville. Here in Huntsville, Texas, mm -hmm. guys. On 12th Street. We've had two shops on 12th Street. Wow. And so, is this an accumulation of some of the stuff that she's had, and then plus yours, and... No, these are all, with just a very few exception, these are all bought for, strictly for resale. Unfortunately, I've, I've kept most of hers. Well, I think Along we... Along with mine, it's quite a lot. I hear that story a lot. And I know I've had the same issue <laughs> letting go, and that is totally fine, guys. If you want to keep the stuff, that's why they're called family heirlooms. Exactly. When you look at something and it reminds you of someone or takes you back to another time in your life. That's pretty. It's, it's absolutely priceless. Memory lane is what I call this place here. Exactly. It's it's a memory lane. Because Memories I didn't even know I was holding on to somewhere up there, and but it comes out when I see it. See pieces that remind me. Mm -hmm. Or something you see triggers a memory. 
something you saw at a grandmother or an aunt's or yes even something that you saw in a shop somewhere where you were with somebody that scary special. uncle <laughs> <laughs> good or bad is this part of the blendo family what uh-uh no the tray is actually a piece of cambridge oh and they would have had their own style of glasses to put in there we just put in the that's a that's a smart red. it gives it a good contrast that's for mm -hmm. sure i'm going to take you guys up to her booth upstairs uh, I, i've shown you her booth upstairs before but uh since i have her in he here in person i thought i would garner some of her knowledge for you guys if you ever come in to sam houston as for Melinda, she might be in here. You can take a chance and get to meet her yourself. Thank you, guys. We'll talk to you in a minute. We're going to go into my first floor booth. This is a small room off to the side, right before the stairs. Show you a few pieces I have in here. Check this door out. Um, this door weighs over 600 pounds. It took my brothers 45 minutes to move it about 50 feet into this room. Um, there is no hardware on it except for those doorknobs. Everything else is wood dowels. I have a friend um, who builds homes and he took a look at it. He said every single flower on here, all the detailing is hand, hand uh, carved. There's no two flowers exactly alike. Um, it is pretty old you can tell because of the height of the door it's 94 inches in total with the whole frame so it's a door and frame all one piece and um i always thought it would look cool like if you had a, a walk-in bar to have it serve as the cabinet build a cabinet behind it um for bar this piece i got at an uh estate cell it is solid uh, cast iron. I have tried my best to do research on it. I can't find another one like it to save my life. Um, it is really old. The neat thing about this is that on the three sides, it's the Trinity. And let me see if I can pick this up for you guys. The other side is probably a little harder to get to. walking through see what's new today a couple of our vendors have some new stuff I always like coming in and seeing what new things they have so I wanted to show y'all this beautiful shelf I have an armoire that oh, I guess it's a, not even armoire that matches it but oh my gosh I love it so pretty, so pretty. I was really surprised to see that today. Some glassware. Oh, pretty job. It was pretty popular. Look at this old doll. Kind of scary. Never been one for dolls. Oh yeah, I'm not one for dolls. Yep, so I don't like dolls. I like this little bitty, little bitty hutch. It's pretty narrow, but it is just so cute. I don't even know if she has it for sale, but it's adorable. All right, so we are upstairs in Melinda's booth up here. She's actually right next to me. Got some cute pieces. Now I have to say, you really have some neat um, furniture. I love some of this furniture. Like you sold that white cabinet. Remember, guys, yep. it was a big white cabinet. I showed y'all. I loved this. You might put this on. This actually came from the estate of Richard Bracehorse Haynes. Oh my! How did you come about this? He actually uh, passed away in Trinity, and 
the local auction company there in Trinity. Yes, I've dealt with them before. Uh, they were given part of his estate, and that was that was in it. It's a very nice, solid piece, guys. I'm. I hope you're able to see the joining like I am here on camera, but. You know, usually you'll see a shifting or nails being pushed. And this actually is in a very good state. No popping of the lamination. This is a beautiful piece. How much do you have on this? Oh, you have a very good price. So 125. I'm going to zoom out and I apologize for my unsteadiness here. So you get an idea of what the drawers look like. This is a cute little chest. It appears to be about 32 inches tall, I'm guessing. Opportunity to uh, have a little bit of history. Racehorse Haynes, guys. So um, I think I'll do a little research on him and maybe um, ad lib in some of uh, a little history about him. I think you guys know what I'm trying to what's fumbling out of my mouth here. Um, but that is a really pretty piece. It has a, some deep reds popping in and it has almost like a burl to the, the grain, as you can see. And it, it does have the bowing that's reminiscent of the, the waterfall area era. Right, am I correct in that? Yeah. So like mid-century. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Very beautiful. Let's take a look at some other pieces. Okay, so I'm sitting here inquiring about this piece. I know the lighting in here probably is a little bright. So I'm gonna zoom in and show you this marble is so pretty. So my grandfather was a master marble setter and he had, of course, used all the scraps and he loved this particular marble and had it all over the house and his house, even his baseboards. So she's telling me, guys, that this piece was her mother's. I love this. So what did she use it for and in what room? Most recently, she used it as an entryway piece. As you came into her house, there was the marble top, and above it was a French mirror. Ooh, I bet that was beautiful. So, and you can see at the bottom, it has a little lift to it. So it's not a flat, um, flat pan piece on the ground. It's actually got a lift. And it's got a real nice three quarter inch layer of marble on it. I'll take a look at the back. I'm trying to be as smooth as I can for y'all. So you it's really, Probably about 150 years old. You can tell a lot of history just from the back. I love the backs of furniture. You can tell a lot. The unfinished, you know, sometimes you'll see an autograph or signature of the woodworker that made it. You remember this growing up in childhood? Mm hmm Was it a catch-all? Oh, no. She was no. not allowed, huh? Her formal pieces were formal pieces. Oh, wow. Maybe that's why you are you have such an eye for these beautiful pieces I love. Look at this tiny little guy. I mean, he is little. He cannot, he's the size of a Coke can, or as high as a Coke can. Definitely better. He's cute. Pretty pieces. Oh, I love this piece. Okay, so I have this specifically in one of my videos. Tell me about this piece. I'll take you guys around while she's talking. This came from an estate sale in Arkansas where my daughter lives. She uh, saw it advertised, sent me a picture to find out if I would be interested uh, in it. Because I, I have a lot of oriental things in my home. And uh, of course told her, absolutely. Uh, she purchased it and brought it down here. I really don't know anything about it. 
uh, I think it was imported. But it is, uh, it certainly makes a statement. Oh, this is such a beautiful piece. How heavy is it? It's heavy. It looks it, like it is heavy. It would be monstrous. Look at the engraving, a carving on this. I like tinkering with wood and woodworking, and this this just amazes me. Kind of looks like an owl on his belly, doesn't it? <laughs> like he's got the big guy here, and he's like a little owl just going, "Hey, what's up?" And then the the pools. Look how they're the faces. Those are so cool. All right, guys. So, Miss Melinda is dealer number 28. She has a booth down on the first floor and then a double booth up here on the second floor. Let's see what I can catch in the background here. I love what you did with this space. It was had been sitting here and it occupied for I don't know how many years and needed a desperate makeover and you guys did a great job. Oh, I should have had that music cut off before I started this. I'm going to have to edit, edit it out. Sorry, sorry, Josh. So my, <laughs> my son-in-law does all my editing to the videos. Thank you, Josh, so much. Best son-in-law ever. I love your stuff, huh? I really do. Ooh, that's a pretty set, too. Mm-hmm. That's another one of my mother's pieces. Oh, guys. Okay, real quick. We'll take a quick look. It's after hours. We're all just exhausted, but I had to get Miss Melinda on tape before we headed out. That is so pretty. Is that the original fabric, or did you have no, it redone? No, she had it recovered probably 10 years ago. That is so pretty. All right, guys. Hopefully, you see something you like. And uh, if you don't have an opportunity to come up to the store, please leave a comment or call the store directly, Sam Houston Antique Mall. And um, if you comment, I will put you in touch with the dealer directly, see what we can work out for you. Of course, we want to make everyone happy. And if you just simply have a question about a piece, um, or if you have a question about one of your pieces, please hit me up. I will find the information, get you to the right person, because we all have our different areas that we dive into. And if it's glass, I can assure you I will be putting you in contact with Miss Melinda. Thank you.